It's time to play catch up on some documents. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Now the last document drop that we went over was the defense's second motion to dismiss. It had a very detailed title and told us that there was at least 24 issues that the defense was going to be addressing in this motion to dismiss. And just so that we can re-review that for just a second, in the title, they give us quite a bit of information. They're basing this motion on a biased grand jury inadmissible evidence, lack of sufficient evidence, and prosecutorial misconduct in withholding exculpatory evidence. Now, I went back to go through this title because the very first document that is brand new that we need to go over is the state's motion to extend their response time. Now, in this, they're claiming that the sealed documents for the defendant's motion to dismiss, the second one, is 109 pages and 49 pages of that is the defendant's argument so that means that the rest of those pages that is all cases that they're citing that is evidence that they have obtained themselves there's going to be all kinds of different things in these documents because they have all of these different things that they're trying to prove is actually happening so no, not all 24 things have to do with the grand jury. I've seen some people asking that. No, there's 24 issues in total for all of these different subjects. So all of these pages, I agree. The state's going to need a whole lot more time to go through that much information, especially since you have to be fair. We can't expect to just constantly be mad at the state because they're not giving over the defense anything. The state needs just as much sufficient time to go over everything that they're getting from the defense just as well. Okay. So it, it, they're, this is correct. This is correct to me. They should be allowed more time to go through all of this information because this is basically 24 mistakes that the defense is claiming the state is making. So the state, you know, they have the right to go in and be like, okay, well, we're being accused of 24 different accusations. So now here's our rebuttal to all 24 of those accusations, because that's basically what their response is going to end up being. Now for the big conversation starter. Okay. I did a live with Crime Sleuth in on Friday where she went over these documents. And that was pretty much the first time that I had been able to go through them. So I was running errands and doing things. But whenever we got on the live and we went through them, I, I have comments. I just, I, I have, I have a lot to say and it's just kind of surprising to me that the defense is the one like wanting the cameras removed because we see all the craziness going on in the case, right? Like all of the questions about the DNA, about the sheath, about the red tape that might or might not have been cut through about the ethics about the moralities about the protocols about the different agencies involved about how they did this and how they got to that okay so you would think first and foremost that the defense would want to make sure that whenever all of the truths quote unquote truths start coming out that everyone can see them can see it can see what's happening but it seems like a very immature reason for the reasons why they want the cameras out. And it's really more like, oh, I can't deal with the cyber bullies is how I'm taking this. Like, seriously. Okay. And I understand their points. I agree with some of their points. But when it comes to the justice system and the way things to that the way that they need to be done in order to validate that things are done correctly and there's no corruption that's being just slipped under the rug. Their argument is not valid enough for me personally for cameras to be removed from the courtroom. It's just not. Well, take a look at these pictures and we're not going to go through all the details because by now most of you guys have got the information from other channels, but I'm just going to hit key points here. See these photos right here. Now this is 
the kind of stuff that the judge apparently doesn't want happening. He doesn't want the cameras completely focused on Brian. He doesn't want it just to be a completely biased sort of stream. He wants the entire courtroom and nothing really being focused on. Just get the whole picture and get on with your day. Okay. Simple enough. But whoever the cameramen are, I don't know if it's been multiple people or just one, but whoever Court TV has in there doing the camera work is a disobedient little brat and just thinks that they can just get away with things because they keep on doing things that the judge doesn't want to happen. Okay. We've seen the judge actually have to like reprimand a cameraman already during the process of a hearing because they're doing everything that the judge is asking them not to do. Now, there is a very simple solution for this, and I don't understand why the court systems don't already have this implemented. I mean, honestly, some of them probably do. But this entire situation could be alleviated by one simple solution. Put your own damn cameras in the courtroom. Find places to where everything that you want captured and everything that you don't want captured is in or out of the view it needs to be in and just stick them there permanently put microphones where you need to put them and put them there permanently have someone who can press record and press stop when it's all over and don't rely on court tv or some other camera person that comes in from another station to be the one responsible for doing any of this if you don't want this craziness then figure it out your damn selves court it's not hard to just alleviate some of this stuff. There's plenty of money there. Okay. We see how much money is being thrown into this investigation. We see how much the prosecutors are getting paid. We see how much Ann Taylor and her team are getting paid. We see how much money is available. They could spend a couple thousand dollars to put a stabilized, centralized recording system in those courtrooms to where these things are not a problem or, you know, don't let court TV be your camera people. There's other crime networks that would willingly take the place of the idiot who doesn't listen. I mean, there's two solutions right there. And I'm just one person. So y'all figure it out. This is stupid. But I will say this picture in particular right here, and I'll pop up the one I'm talking about, has been so heavily edited. They have done crazy things to his eyes and made them look very large and just very scary. And it's just, it's so very apparent that it's photoshopped and it's not right. But that seems to be the one that is getting circulated the most because he looks the most sinister in it. So that shows a lot of bias there in itself. Now, one of the most immature things in this, and this isn't really, you know, immaturity on the defense's team part because I claim that this is like an immature fight. It's more the immaturity of the public, which again, this is 2023. This is the internet. This is one of the most high profile cases in a while. Well, honestly, there's a couple really huge high profile cases that have been kind of bundled up and going along with each other. This is just one of a handful of really important cases right now, actually. But to claim that, you know, there's people that are going to make immature remarks about things that are captured inside of the courtroom, therefore we should just throw, you know, the entire situation of cameras completely out and not let anyone see anything. It's just, it's asinine. It's asinine. This tweet right here that's admitted into this evidence had, it shows like, I guess, 5,600 I don't know if this means like it, it, it went through, I think like 5,600 people's like feeds at the time. Okay. But only 20 people hearted it. Only three people like retweeted it and it only had nine comments. And this is the one that they're putting in here because whoever this person was noticed that I guess Brian Koberger's zipper wasn't up like all the way up to his belt. Okay. Well, if this person wouldn't have posted that, I wouldn't have known that. But if Ann Taylor wouldn't have had it admitted into evidence in this document, thousands of us wouldn't have known that because that really wasn't getting any, you know, viral movement. Okay. And then this other one, you know, I know that he apparently was like smiling at his family when he walked in the courtroom. Okay. And it's, he shouldn't be judged by doing that. A lot of people were claiming that he smiled over at the victim's families like he was taunting them. And that's not the case. 
but that's what happens. I mean, even if this picture would have ended up in the newspaper somewhere because we aren't in the days of the internet, that would have still been the talk. This is your argument. Never mind the fact that we need to make sure that, you know, the FBI isn't interrogating any more witnesses or that there isn't any more corruption going on or that any more documents just aren't there and no homework and no work is being shown. Never mind all of those things. Let's throw a fit. Let's throw a fit because someone noticed his zipper wasn't done up all the way. No. And that's why I don't even care to honestly read like all of it. Like I get it. I really do get it. But in this case, there's so much corruption and so much shady stuff and so many questions unanswered. This is not going to be the answer for this. And if the judge actually grants no cameras on the 1st of September, because this is just happening on Friday, their hearing for this is on Friday. If this is granted, then I have read this entire situation completely wrong because I just don't feel as if this is enough of a reason for them to remove the cameras. I just don't, but we shall see what happens. Now we have this notice of hearing, and this is just what I was just now talking about. They're going to be talking about the cameras on Friday at 1 PM. And I'm pretty sure that whatever judge judge ends up doing, we'll know before the end of the day. So now we have the defendant's seventh supplemental request for discovery. Now what I would love to do, and I'm hoping I have time to do that this weekend, is I'd like to take the motion to dismiss and the rest of these and look up these codes and do a video on just the codes. Because I know that in my video about the motion to dismiss, I said, you know, there's not a lot of information here. It's just, you know, two little paragraphs and it's all under seal, but the codes that they're talking about will give us quite a bit of insight. And I know that there are some channels that have gone in and looked at them. I just haven't had the time. I'm, I'm extremely busy, extremely busy, but I want to, because I'm trying, I want to be able to understand it myself so that whenever the information does come to light to the public, if, and when it does, I have a better understanding of it. So hopefully maybe this weekend I can sit down and go through the codes, but for now, that's all we're getting. We're getting, blank exhibits because everything is being filed under seal. We're getting titles and we're getting codes. So we really do need to go through all those things. Now this is another stipulated motion to file exhibit F under seal. Again, just everything that we're going to see here at this point, at least for this video, for these documents is just them wanting everything done under seal and all of those seals being approved. Of course, they're going to be approved. There's no reason for them not to be approved. And this is another thing. I'm just going to mention this real quick. When it comes to the fight for the IgG information, you see how things can be filed under seal, which just means that the public doesn't get it. That is all that most of us that are in this argument about how the IgG is valid AF. That's all that we want. We want the state to hand over the actual information to the defense so that the defense can look at it. They can file it under seal and we won't say a word. It's not up to us to make a decision based on the paperwork that gets filed. We are just lay people. Just beca because I have a decade old degree in criminal forensic science doesn't mean that I know what the hell is going on now in that field. It just means that I have an interest in it. So I kind of dig a little bit deeper than most people when it comes to these cases, but it doesn't mean that I know everything. So me, the public needing to see those documents, needing to see that IgG information, needing to see that family tree, needing to see everything that was done. No. We just, we just want the defense to be able to have it. That's it. That's it. So that whole, oh, we don't need to leak the family's information and all this crazy stuff. Okay, well, it won't be. File it under seal. That's all that needs to happen. I don't understand what the big headache is over all of this, you know, besides the fact that none of it actually exists. You know, there's, there's that. So now, since the defense has not argued about this whatsoever, which is fair, you know, they need time, the state needs time, they both need time, the new time limit for them to respond to the motion to dismiss is September the 14th. And the defense has to reply to that response by the state 
no later than the 20th. So today is August the 29th. They are going to have, that's like what, 16-ish days? And then the defense is only going to have about six days to respond to whatever the state decides to send over as their response to the second motion to dismiss, if that makes any sense. But that is it for now. That is all of the newest documents. I want to know what you guys' position is personally on the cameras in the courtroom situation. Leave it down in the comments. And please do not forget, tomorrow is the deadline to enter the $50 gift card giveaway for subscribers that comment on this video right here. I'm gonna let it run through the end of Wednesday. So the video that I post on Thursday is gonna be where I announce the actual winners. I don't know the subject of the video. It might be Idaho, might be a different case, might be a brand new case. Just keep an eye out for a Thursday evening video to drop because it will have the winner in it. And the link for this video is in the description box. That's it. See y'all.